They won't work there. Maybe they'll work up here. Oh, it's 602. Yeah. <sighs> How about now? How about now? Well, then you better shut yours off and turn it back on. <laughs> Why do I have to? Because I left my phone. Oh, nice you. Says use a park, YouTube. Okay, so you can see. I see the side of Chuck's head. <laughs> okay. So that's good. There he is. Do you have the number to dial in on your phone? or? No. I do. Recent calls? Well, I just want to switch the screen, so. What do you mean? We didn't. We don't have oh, music. No, I don't. Yep. Uh, so. I, I have sure. All right. <laughs> Where's one of you people who are really a high tech person? Come on. One of you. I, I can't do anything with the laptop thing. <laughs> Come on in, Rebecca. We're still live. She's probably going to be your tech person if anything. She'll know what to do about it. Rebecca, they need some help. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's doing the call-in thing. Do they, is it training? I think, okay. So they're just going to call. There we go. We got, I, I, I pay attention. We are definitely on. Okay. Okay, I just gave myself this. There we go. We got, I, I. Yeah. We are definitely on. My dad says hello. Hi, Brian. Hello. I got the music. So I, th I think it's... I see my picture there, but I don't see it up there, so that... No, it won't show up there. Let's study, y'all. Okay. <laughs> no, but it shows up on... <laughs> their phones. All right. You spell what? I spell y'all. Y-A-N apostrophe L-L-S. So that's what I put on the screen. I didn't know your topic. That's right. But no, the, the, the y'all is Y apostrophe y'all. It's... It's all, because it's they shorten it. They shorten it. You all, you and. So we're officially ready to start. Hey, I'm still trying to fit. So they're not going to try to call in. They're going to make us. They torture us because we. They need to, so we can get rid of the music. Well, or we can just hang up the phone. Anyway, just gonna so this. let's go ahead and start like we normally do. Way over yonder. What are you, what, what are you happy for? What are you? I'm happy for having money for fruit. Um, there was a time when I was thinking fruit where I had, I couldn't, I was out of work, so I didn't have any money. So I had to either, you know, vomit for my mom or, um, or you know, go without it because I wasn't about to go pick up my other food, my old food, old life food, mm. eat those, you know. So uh, today I just got enough money for fruit, and I'm so grateful for that. All right. Yeah, All right. Awesome. I'm just glad to be here. You're just glad. Amongst my Christian family. All right. 
I've spent way too much time around my non-Christian family. I'm glad to be here. We love you. We love you, love you, love you. We were sent in love. <laughs> yes, you have, and I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. I'm thankful for you teaching tonight. <laughs> I'm thankful that you're the tech guy because we wouldn't get nowhere. <laughs> no. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's right. All right. Me? Bron Broncos, what, what, what are you thankful for? <laughs> um, I'm thankful I can wear this T-shirt. <laughs> it's a very good shirt. Uh, we, uh, we used to have Western, to Western Michigan University is a good little school. Nick went there for a year, so oh, I'm thankful because um, that child of mine says he's going to be a church on Sunday. All oh, right. So now it's been that's since his last vaccination, and I'm hoping yeah. they came to the funeral home, and I was very glad to see both of them. Aww, that's special. All right, so we're going to center table. I'm thankful I'm related to those two over there. <laughs> the computer, you know. Are you sure that you want to admit that? <laughs> uh, you say that because we have that not recorded. It's and that can be thrown back at you at any given moment. <laughs> That's the best family ever. All right. Well, I don't know. I, all, everybody here is part of my family, so I don't know if that, if, if that group is the most best family. <laughs> ah, so. I'm thankful for Beautiful, wonderful day. Yes, the sunshine. All right. We skipped somebody. Do you, you don't not thankful for anything? Oh, I said I'm happy to be here. Just happy to be here. <laughs> All right, come on. Now, guess who's up? I'm happy to be here, but I'm kind of sad in the way to neighbors trying to fight with my boyfriend over money he bought, and I don't like that. Ooh. Tried to say that we took it. We do not take nothing from oh. anybody like that. All we right. lost it someplace else. I'm happy to be among my Christian family. That wouldn't be All right, so moving on. Rebecca, you're thankful for fries and chicken strips, right? <laughs> okay. Here, here. Clubs and fries. <laughs> She's thankful she survived the heat. It, it was a much hotter day today, and she and she, she survived well. So she did she, su she survived much better today. <laughs> go, All right. Um, I'm for sunglasses. Sunglasses Me on a day too. like today. <laughs> yes, I got a pair. I got to start taking them and wearing them. All right. That's so that you stole from your mom. No, no, not mine. No, I said, I said, I said that. Now you can't be thankful for. Friends and McDonald's. And technology. And technology. <laughs> yeah. I'm thankful for Frankie. He's been keeping me company. Aww. He's very confused why the family is all gone. Say, say, where is everybody? Where is everybody? Aww. So then we come to Miss Vera. I'm thankful that Rebecca working with you means I get to spend a whole lot more time with my mom. Mm. And I am thankful that Tom has been helping me in the yard because even after the COVID this long, I get winded and tired quickly. So it's been a blessing to have him. I'm awesome. five. Miss Nada, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful that I can breathe again. Amen. Still not breathing quite right all the time, but. It's going a whole lot longer. Oh, it's getting there. And I'm glad I didn't choke to death on that water earlier. I thought. <laughs> well, I'm glad we made it. We made it all the way out to Emily City, got all of our cuts there, and got back. Uh, any of y'all know Lois Templeman? She's a member over at Parkview. She's been. Uh, yeah, she. I'm thankful that she stayed out of my way this morning. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sending this to her now. John Eppelman is not nice. She, 
No, she, she has a ten. She she loves to talk, but when I'm running a mower, it's kind of hard for her to be up that close to me because I get worried about it picking up a stone or something. Mm -hmm. You are on tape, That's all right. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not afraid. I'm straightforward. If I if I'm gonna say it here, I would say it in front of her. So, <laughs> all right. Well, we've had a we had a good day. Uh, I, I'm thankful for Oreo Mint Blizzards. Haven't seen Bigfoot, <laughs> but you haven't. You're not. You're not in the Yukon. You're not going to see I Bigfoot. Haven't seen him. Don't mean he's not out there. <laughs> All right. So, I thought tonight we would we would talk about a subject that, to me, uh, when I think about it, we we read the scripture, okay. And if you would go ahead and turn to Matthew 17. And the title of the, the actual study tonight is The Misunderstood Mustard Seed. Okay? Misunderstood Mustard Seed. And as we get into it, that in uh, Matthew uh, 17 and verse 20, and I want to read from King James first. All right? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So, right off the get, okay? We have to get, get a little bit of context probably on this. It's the, it, you know, as we read, let's go ahead and, and, and flip over to the uh, corresponding cor uh, and, and keep your hand there at the Matthew 17. Uh, Luke chapter 17. And again, I want to use my King James. Luke 17, verses 5 and 6. Okay, I'm, I, I'm hanging with you. Luke, but yeah, keep your hand definitely at the other because we're going right back there. Luke 17, verses 5 and 6. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Now that, that seems like a, a, something that all of us could ask for, right? To, for God to increase our faith. And, he sa and the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to the sycamore tree, be plucked up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it should obey you. So we've got two different passages talking about this mustard seed and something that we could do if we had that much faith. Now, as we, as we go back to this Matthew 17, for us to get a little bit of understanding about this, okay, is he talking about the size of a mustard seed? Right? Because I don't know how many of y'all have ever seen mustard seed. It's a, I mean, it's a little feller. But is he talking about the size? He didn't say the size. Right? Well, for us to get, uh, get some understanding of that, um, here in Matthew uh, 17, back up to verse 15. Right? And... And one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back and, and said with a loud voice, Glorify God. And he fell down to, on his face. Well, I'm, that's the Luke passage. Boy, I better get, get to the right one. I want the Matthew passage back. That's okay. I want the Matthew passage. See, see how confusing I can get? Lord, have mercy on me. This, this, is, this is what, verse 15. Lord, have mercy on me. My son, uh, he is a lunatic 
and vexed sore. And oftentimes he falleth into a fire, and often into water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Now, the disciples had the ability to heal. But they couldn't cure this, this man here, okay? Because when he says, he said, I brought him to your disciples, he's really talking about that inner circle, the 12, right? And Jesus answered and said, Oh, ye faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the, the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples uh, uh, to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? Then when Jesus says, so as we look at this, he's, he's, he tells them, you know, hey, uh, this, my, my, my son is, has been like this basically all of his life. The disciples couldn't cure him. Jesus cures him, right? And then Jesus says, because of your, your unbelief. Now, any of you got American standards? Okay. Oh, I got, I, I, I've got one with me. It's just, uh, does anybody, uh, instead of unbelief, do you have a different... Okay, much, 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 much better translation. Little faith. Oh, ye of little faith, right? Because he's, they, they've tried to, to cure this, this man and couldn't, right? And then he says, oh, because of your unbelief or your little faith, for verily I say unto you, if you have, if, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. So is he talking about that little, that size of no, just by looking at these verses, right? First of all, he, he, why would he rebuke them for their little faith or, un, uh, or unbelief, right? And then say, if you had little faith, if he's talking about this, little faith. Why would he say, if you, because of your little faith, and then if you had a little faith? He wouldn't say that. So that it's got to be some other thing. Logic says that there's got to be another application to this, Right? As we think about it, there's, there's a little difference from what we normally would think because automatically we think of that size. So what then is the faith of a mustard seed? Okay, well the first word that's used, unbelief, is the Greek word apistia. Now that's A-P-I-S-T-I-A, -I apistia. And it, it literally is the noun, the Greek noun, that means little faith. So he's, he says to him, oh, you have little faith. You've got, you've got small faith. You've got, you, you've got small faith. And because, you, because you've got small faith, if you had, if you had small faith. No, again, he's, he's not talking that. The second word used when he says faith is the Greek word Polyrophoria. Now I want you to understand it. It's it, 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 it's P L E O P H, and I've got it covered. O R I A. Polyrophoria. Now the word floria, which is part of that. Okay, it's the word where we get flower from, flora, which means bloom. Right. So polyrophoria is totally bloomed. Right? Or it's, it, 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 really, it, it's, it, it's the noun which means entirely confident. So we're thinking of this about this little mustard seed, and he's saying if you had the faith of the mustard seed. Right? So when he's saying faith of a mustard seed, he's talking about, hey, you have to have total belief, total faith. It can't be lacking, right? Can't be lacking anything. Uh, let's uh, turn to uh, Matthew uh, chapter uh, 13.
put that American standard on the side. All right. Just a minute. Oh, that's all right. Matthew, Matthew 13. So the... We're, and we're, and, we're, and we're, going to, we're going to bring that up. Jumping ahead. Oh. <laughs> that's all right. I, I'm, I'm glad because, yeah, that's, uh, so it, it has entire faith. It has, and we're going to, we're going to see this. In Matthew, the, the 13th chapter, verse 31. Another parable put forth he unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. And indeed, is the, it is the least of all seeds, right? Again, it's a small seed, but when it grows, it is the greatest among herbs. It becomes a tree so that birds can lodge the, uh, you know, can, birds of the air can lodge in the branches thereof. So this little seed has in it Every fiber realizing that, guess what? Every fiber of that, that mustard seed is ingrained to become a tree. I love my grandfather because of this. Because my grandfather owned a farm there in Paducah, West, West Paducah, actually, Kentucky. And on his farm, as you started down towards the bottom land, there was this little itty-bitty flat before the, you went on down the hill, and my grandfather had what was an old sandbox. And very, very early in the spring, he would plant mustard in that box. It was a little garden area for him. And we would grow mustard, and we would hew it out, and we'd have mustard greens, and man, some of the best greens you could eat, mustard greens. So we, he would grow the, 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 this mustard, and what he would do is he would hew out, and he was finding the healthiest and most most beautiful of all the, 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 the plants, and he would leave that intact, and it would grow all summer. And by the time you got to July, that thing would stand six foot tall, okay? And it would grow on up to about eight foot tall, and it would actually branch out to where birds would lodge in it, yes. But I got to see my grandfather showing what this mustard seed was all about growing up, right? He, he showed us by, by example, hey, we got, to, we got to enjoy the fruits of the labor, you know, because we got to eat the mustard, but we also got to see what he was trying to teach. And, and, and he was trying to teach that the faith of a mustard seed isn't just about small size, it's about totality, totally confident, right? Mark chapter 9. Totally confident. In verse 23, Jesus said unto them, Okay, I'll give you a second. That's good. Verse 23. And Jesus said unto them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible, right? We have a scripture that says, As a man thinketh, so is he. Right? If, if, if you think, well, I'm nothing but a bum, guess what? You're a bum. I, I use this, this verse here, and I'm going to tell you, my philosophy, someone who is diagnosed with cancer, when they're diagnosed with cancer, there are two statements that a person can make. You get the diagnosis of cancer, and you can either say, I'm living with cancer, or I'm dying of cancer. 
And whichever one you bring forth is where you put yourself. Because you want to be a survivor. The mindset. the mindset is it. You've got to, you've got to decide, I'm going to survive. And I speak from uh, experience. I'm 35 years a cancer survivor. Right? So we have to, we have to, all things are possible to him that believes. Right? We have to believe. We have to trust. Right? And that's what, that's what dealing with faith is. So that's, that's bringing out that totality of your faith. Uh, turn on over to the 11th chapter here in uh, Mark. Mark 11, so you're just turning over a page or two there. Okay, and I'm going to begin at verse 22 there. And Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Right? Have faith in God. Trust God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and thou shalt doubt not, shall not doubt in thy heart, but shall believe that those things which thou sayest come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, you're looking for a job. You know, you're, you're, you're unemployed and you're looking for a job. Your attitude should be what? The next place I walk into, I'm going to get a job. Confidence. Confidence. That's right. That's what it's supposed to be. That's, that's supposed to be for us as Christians. We're supposed to be the most positive of people. We have to have this attitude of gratitude, and in that gratitude, we, 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 can, we can accomplish anything by just putting our mindset to it. Right? Right? I'm uh, going to tell you that I, through my life, myself, I, uh, people say, aren't you afraid of that guy firing you? I said, well, I was looking for a job when I got that one. I, my, I, say, I say, normally my phone rings. I, 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 I verbalize, I'm looking for employment, and the next thing I know, my phone rings, or my door gets knocked on. <laughs> hey, John, would you like to come to work? Right? So that it's because automatically we put out this, this positive vibe of whatever that I need, God's going to supply it, right? And as far as these, these brethren way back then, it wasn't that they didn't have faith. It's that they didn't have total faith, right? <laughs> and we've got to move on from just, well, I believe, because we, we, we hear people say that all the time, I believe. But that's not faith. Right? That's not faith. And that's what we're looking for is faith. Let's move on over to James. James chapter 1. James is the book after Hebrew and before Peter. Okay. All right? Okay. Yeah, James is after the, the book that tells who's supposed to make the coffee in the morning. Amen to that. <laughs> but I do something wrong with That's all right. Get up early enough to do it for me. <laughs> We're, we're going to start, and uh, I, I, I want to go ahead and include this. Let's start at verse 2. My brother encountered all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. That's, that's a concept that blows our minds right off the get. Counted all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. When things are going bad in our lives, we don't like it, right? And this tells us we're supposed to have joy in it, right? Get a flat tire out there on the road. You, you, you're probably not going to be very joyful about it, are you? 
Yeah, but then you can start trusting that, hey, and maybe I, I had a flat tire, so I avoided that accident. And you can be thankful in the process that you even had a vehicle in the first place because you could be walking all those miles. <laughs> I, was, I was driving out for a Wednesday night Bible study a, a few years ago out at Emily City. And as I was driving out, my engine blew at 32 mile road. And I'm sitting on the side of the road and I'm thinking, well, who am I gonna call? Who am I gonna call? And up comes E.J. Price. He said, hey, Brother John, what's going on? He said, my engine blew. My engine blew. God, God has a way of, of watching behind us, folks. So that diver's temptation. I was in the straits, but yes, we, we move on from there. Knowing that the trying of your faith, what? Worketh patience. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is one that might be hard on people. Uh, I've got, uh, I want patience. We all say, I want patience. Guess what you got to have to get patience? Got to get tested. Got to get tested. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're going to get tested. It's like the, the sword and, and how you, you heat it and you beat it and you beat on it and you beat on it. And I, the sword is strong. I, I didn't carry a knife tonight. If you heat and the beating, it doesn't become a strong blade. Yeah, if you, and that's that's analogy that I use, man. Uh, I normally carry a knife on me, and I, I want that knife to be as sharp as could be. Well, how does it got to get to be sharp? It's got to be tempered. And that's the same with us. We have to be tempered. So, when uh, ver verse 4 there. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect, entirely wanting nothing. So, you, the, the perfect patience is going to, to let you know that God's there to provide for you. Right? God's there to provide for you. He's going to take care of the, what you want, what you, what, what you need. Wanting nothing. You, you're going to have, be entire. You're going to have it all. Right? As we move on here, because we actually, the verse 5 is where we get into the, the material that I, okay? If ye lack wisdom, let him, that, uh, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally. Man, we did Proverbs the other night, uh, and, and, and the whole proverb was talking about obtaining wisdom on Sunday evening. And uh, look, you, you, wisdom, w w wisdom without understanding, you know, you, they got to have, have them together. How many of you have known somebody that was so smart they's dumb? There, there was a, there was, yeah, there, there was a uh, math professor at Un Wayne State University that for him to get to his car, which was uh, in a parking lot across from the building where he was, somebody had to walk him across the light because he wasn't smart enough to cross on his own. But he was a whiz when you step in front of the chalkboard in math. Right? So that, if, we, if, if, if we lack wisdom, ask for it, right? But let him ask in faith. So wait a minute, we've got to ask in faith. And we're talking, again, it's talking about that totality of faith. Nothing wavering, that's how I know it, that that's what it was talking about. Because it says, ask in faith, not wavering. That means I've got to be absolutely assured, Right? We're going, to be, we're going to be confident that whatever we ask of God, he's going to take care of it for us. All right? For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. We live close enough to St. Clair, don't we? We can go out there and watch that. All right? We can watch. Uh, when they put a Small craft advisory out on that, that lake. If you, ain't, if you ain't driving something with some, you know, uh, they, they, when, they, when they put that warning out, most of the yachts that go up and down St. Clair come in. Why? Because those waves will just absolutely tear up a ship. Right? So we're, gonna, we're not going to let 
the wind and, 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 you know, make us like waves tossed all over. Let not a man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Right? So we're not going to receive anything. If, and, and the next part is where it, where it gets at. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Right? You're unstable. Why, why are you unstable? Because if you're wishy-washy, right, you're not, you're not getting what God wants from you. I think of it a lot like a, um, like a tree that if it's planted too high and its roots don't get down in the ground and it's not planted solid, it, the wind comes and it knocks the tree over. But if its roots are deep into the ground, it's solid and you can have a tornado come through and, and not rip it off. And I, I think that's a lot how our faith needs to be, is, is those deep, deep roots so that we're supposed to be rooted. We have to be uprooted when rooted, stand, all standing firm. Come. Right. Stand firm. So we, we have to have a, a, a faith that, that's not wavering. Do you think that, that maybe that might have been part of the challenge that, that the disciples had there? Well, Ken, I, I, I want to heal him. But can I? I'm gonna, we're we're going to heal you, buddy. Are, we, are, are you sure we can do it? Right? Because Jesus rebuked them for that. In another passage, he says that, that this kind comes out without, let, let, lest you fast and pray. Well, Jesus doesn't need the fasting. He does it all the time. Right? Because he has totality of power. He has all authority. But for us, you know, we have to have a faith that's strong and, and secure, right? Matthew chapter 8, we're going to look at, at somebody who showed this kind of faith. And it comes from a source that probably marveled Jesus' disciples. Okay? In verse 5 here in, in Matthew 8. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came to him a centurion beseeching him. Now we all know because we've been studying there in Acts what a centurion is. He's, he's a man in charge of 100 soldiers. Right? So this centurion comes to him. And he, and he says, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick with a palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Man, Jesus just told you he's going to come to your house and heal your servant. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, we have to get that, Lord, I'm not worthy, right? I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof. You're Jesus, the Savior of the world. I'm not worthy. Hey, I, I, guess what? We could all say that. We're not worthy of what Jesus did for us. But he says, I'm not worthy, right? But speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. So this man says, no, I don't need you to come under my roof. All you got to do, Jesus, is say the word. Right? Jesus, say the word. Tell, tell, tell me that my servant is healed. For I am a man under authority and have soldiers under me. We already know that. He's got a hundred soldiers under him, right? And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. So we all realize that, that you know, we're going to have times in our life when we have people who are under our, our control, and, and if we bid them to do something, they're going to do it, right? I say, I say, hey, Rebecca, edge this property, right? 
And guess what Rebecca does? She edges the property. That's good. We all, we, we, we all are going to have times when we're under the, the, the one who is under authority or we're going to be the one with the authority, right? So both, both ways we have to be able to handle it. This man knows that, that Jesus is a man of authority. He, he trusts who Jesus is. Right? And so he says, I tell him to do. And Jesus said... When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said unto them that followed, Verily, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. And he's talking about all of the territory of Israel. Right? And if you went back over there and seen in Deuteronomies, or in Kings, and seen all the property that belonged to the Israelites... He said, not in Israel. No. In all the vastness of Israel, there's not another man with this kind of faith. Right? And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the son uh, in the kingdom of heaven. So he's, this man is already showing faith. Uh, by the way, I, I truly believe that we we later find out who this man is, this centurion. I truly believe that this centurion was at the cross. Okay? I truly believe that this centurion was at the cross. And he says, what? This is the Son of God. Surely this is the Son of God. I also believe later we find out who this guy is in Acts. Because Peter is sent to him. I believe this is Cornelius. And he's, he, he, he shows such a faith. And later on, we, we, it, you know, Cornelius, we find that he is a man of faith, but he was a man of you know, of the Jewish faith and needed to learn a more perfect way, right? Another example, and it's verse, I bet you every one of y'all can quote Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. See, Nita can, Nita quote it. The Apostle Paul writes there, and he says, I can do all things through Jesus Christ, which strengthens me. That's, that's the Paul showing faith. I can, right? It's not a, maybe I can. It's not a, well, I think I can. It's not a, well, I, I'll try. No, I can do all things through Jesus Christ, which strengthens me. Now, To find out where Paul got that from, we back up here in Philippians 4. And beginning at verse 4, rejoice in the Lord, and again I say rejoice. So he, what's he saying to us Christians? He says, be happy. Doesn't matter what's going on, be happy. I think of this uh, when, when it says rejoice. In the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, I think about, hey, second grade, elementary school, I got an A on my paper, on, on, on a spelling test, right? I got that A on that spelling test, and guess what it did? I ran all the way home, mama, 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 because I was rejoicing, Right? And that's what, that's what he's asking from us, to rejoice, to be happy about, right? Verse 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. So what, what's, what's moderation? He said such gentleness. 
gentleness, okay? Under, the, uh, under control. Uh, a, a, a real good word, and I know that, the, that uh, meek, right? Uh, meek, when we think of the word meek, do you think of an animal that's beat down? Uh, not me. A horse is meeked, right? We meek a horse. We meek a team of oxen, right? We, we meek them. We get that strength under control. And that's what God's wanting from us, and that's what it's saying here. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Let your, your meekness, that you have yourself under control. That's what's, what it's talking about. This next verse, I, I, I use this verse, and I'll tell you. We as Christians are supposed to be afraid of nothing because this verse, it says, be careful in nothing, right? That means don't be afraid of anything. So uh, you're a Christian. You, you know the only phobia you should have? You should be afraid of being afraid. You should have phobophobia. You, should, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't let fear seep into where it, it has control of you. Be careful in nothing, but in everything, this is why, by everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Paul's giving us these things to, to, to tell us how he got to that part in 13, All right? Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, right? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Now, maybe you might not understand that the Holy Spirit has a purpose and it's to guide us into all truths, right? But he's also supposed to keep us under control. And so this verse is, is letting you know that the peace that passes all understanding, when you let the Holy Spirit guide your life, right? When you, when you don't let Satan have control, you let the Holy Spirit have control, you get that peace. You're standing there in the middle of a storm, and you go, ah. somebody, somebody moved, uh, come up here from Florida. She used to, uh, hurricane season. <laughs> and it, it ain't something to relax about, particularly, is it, during the time it's going on. But, you, you nail the shutters and, <laughs> and you get prepared and then, okay, I'm as prepared as I could be, right? I'm prepared. Well, that's what Paul wants us to understand. We need to be prepared, right? Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue... If there be any praise, think on these things. Well, I don't know where I'm going to get the car payment from. Is that part of what that said there? Thank you. No. It says you're thinking on the things that are good and pure, right? Whatsoever things are lovely, right? Of good report. We should... We, 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 we should automatically in our Christian walk, when somebody starts demeaning a, a, another brother or sister, we need to stop them. Right? We need to stop them and get ourselves back on a keel to where, you know, I, I have to think on good report. Right? I have to think on the things which are right. If there be any virtue... I gave uh, this younger daughter of mine the name that she's got because of a virtuous woman. Vera is named after my grandmother. And she got that name because my grandmother didn't use her first name. She used Vera. Her, her first name was Leela, but she, every, she was always called by Vera. So Vera got that name because I wanted her to realize that this was a virtuous woman and follow after that example. So this is, huh? How'd she do? And she's doing. <laughs> 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 
So, some days she does good, some days she doesn't. Well, you can ask the girls. I didn't do so hot on our way here. I, I had an episode of kind of road rage after some guy had some road rage at me and threw something at the back of my vehicle. So today wasn't the greatest day. <laughs> Those things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace be with you. Right? So Paul, Paul's come, come through all of this to get headed towards that, that verse 13. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at least your care of me hath flourished again. Wherein as ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. So, hey, you, you, you've taken care of me. Even though you really didn't have opportunity to do so, you made sure. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Now, Paul makes a statement there that most of us don't understand, okay? Because he, he talks about contentment. And most of us automatically think of satisfaction. Contentment and satisfaction are not the same. Satisfied means this is perfect, this is okay with me. Contentment means I will deal with it for now. Right? I'm content. I can handle this as it is. And this is what Paul is, is trying to teach us, right? For I know both to be abased and I know how to abound. So I know how to be in want and I know how to have. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Now, that's kind of hard to, uh, to understand for, for, for me, even. How can you be full and be hungry both? Well, I'm full of what I need, but I'm hunger for, I hunger for more. I want more. Right? I want more of the Word. And because of that, Paul got to that verse 13. I can do all things through Jesus Christ, which strengthens me. Right? But for us to get to that, we have to realize that, hey, our faith has to be total faith. It can't be wishy-washy. It has to be, I trust God. I trust God, right? I look at Genesis 1, and I believe that the Lord made this world in, in, in six days and had the fullness thereof. And he rested upon the seventh. Why? Because it says it. I believe it. No, no doubting. No doubting. We are uh, in our ladies' study, and I actually, I was kind of hoping I would be sitting the next time you gave this mustard seed lesson. Uh, we were studying, and we were talking about Abraham and his total faith in God and how he was so confident that whether God speared Isaac or whether God raised Isaac up from the dead, that him and Isaac were both coming back, that when he left his servants behind, and I don't think I ever really pictured it until we were sitting with this study, he told them we, as in him and Isaac, him. would be back. So he had faith, such complete faith in, in God that he was willing to go and, and sacrifice his son because he knew God had promised him that he was going to be the seed that was the seed of promise. He put, he put Isaac on the altar. He put Isaac on the altar. He bound the, the lad. He put him on the altar. And then he grabbed out the, the knife. Mm -hmm. And guess what? He drew the knife back. He stopped him. He was ready. Uh, I want you to know that we don't get the total picture. If you were reading this in Greek, it was on the downward stroke when God stops him. He was going through with it. And, and I'd like to point out, Isaac had complete faith in both his father and God because he was about 30-something years old when this happened. He's not the 13-year-old little boy. We see in the pictures and the kids' Bible stories, he was like 30-something years old where, when this happened. Where, where, where's the sacrifice, God? <laughs> you know, yeah, that's what the boy asked. Where's the sacrifice? You know lad asked? Hey. And at some point he had he said, to know. I mean, especially when he got when he, his dad's like, "Hey, lay down on the altar," and he puts him up on the altar because I'm sure 
He needed a little help. What, <laughs> what, what, what did his dad say to him? God will provide. Right? So that's total faith. Do we have that kind of faith? Let me tell you. I don't know if I could put my daughters either one. Even on, in a, a moment when they've got me mad, I don't think I could put them on, a, on an altar. <laughs> and uh, do that kind of thing. It's just the, the lesson is, is really about us understanding that our faith can't be just a, hey, I, I'm going to go to worship on Sunday and then do nothing all week long towards our Christianity. Brother Paul says it all the time. He says, I'm Christian. Mm -hmm. Guess what? That's, that's 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. 24 hours a day. Actually, 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 11 seconds. If you do that and you don't do anything else through the because week, that's how long it takes for the earth to rotate. God told you to do because he said study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. We have to be ready. And how are we going to be ready? We can't, we, we, we can't build our faith if we don't study. Right? And our faith is known by our fruit. So if we're not working for the Lord, then we're not producing a working faith. I always bring up Opal because she's 90, 92, 91, whatever. She studies the Bible all the time. She, she loves studying the Bible. You're the smartest lady I know. Yeah. Well, for me, that was Lenore Dean. Lenore Dean had a master's degree in, uh, in religion, and she could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clifford Tucker. Oh, boy. <laughs> I might take it for that. <laughs> oh, that would be something to see. <laughs> okay. I, I, I've been in, in a room when, when the two of them were discussing things and talking. Uh, and it was just, it was a beautiful thing to say. Uh, a woman who was so devout about study that she said, yeah, I may not be able to preach, but I'm still going to get my degree. Mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. Well, Anna Lewis did that too, right, Pepper? Yeah, yeah. Anna Lewis has a, was a nurse's in the mm -hmm. um, ministry. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, her, her, her and Walt, Walter, both were at school at Hardin at yeah. the same time. So. Yeah. There was a really good article from uh, Focus Press called Five Characteristics of Bad Bible Studies. Mm -hmm. I might put it in the bulletin. It's a long one, though, but it was a really good article. So yeah, so you do it in a in, in, in a, a series of f multiple weeks. <laughs> Two can be continued. <laughs> yeah, it's a really long article, but it's, uh, I mean, it's well, really good. I, I I hope that y'all were able to gain something from this tonight. It's a little different from the last study we did, but uh, I, th this is one that has always been forefront with me because of my grandfather and it was just a blessing to to grow up and see that and then to truly get to understand it because even as a child I really didn't understand what you know. And a mustard seed is no bigger than a piece of your pencil lead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's it, 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 you know tiny. teeny tiny and and uh, we, we have to realize that it, it wasn't the size he was talking about it. He was talking about what was in that seed, right? And yet we, for years and years, I've heard ministers use, well, it was the size, the size of a mustard seed. No, no, no. Well, read me any version that you want, and you show me where it says the size of a mustard seed. There's nowhere. Uh, no, a mustard seed it, 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 it's vegetable. Okay, okay it, it's a herb, really. Okay. Uh, mustard green, collard green, turnip green. You know, how's them all? Greens are greens. Greens are greens. <laughs> Spinach. Mm mm mm. So sharp. Sharp. Kale. 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 Kale.
hell. Well, now, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna do you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come on, come on with you. Uh, poke. <laughs> poke. I, and, and I'm, I'm happy to say that I see poke growing all the time here in the north now. People, people say, "What is that plant?" I said, "That's poke." poke. <laughs> yep, that's poke. They said, well, what do you do with poke? I said, you make a real good salad. <laughs> it's not, it, when it says salad, it's really, it's a, it's a mustard. It, it's, it's like a mustard green. It's a green. You just cook it up. But, yep. So, I, I, again, I hope that you gain something from this. I, uh, I, I love this lesson. Uh, yep, Vera, I've, I've brought it forth a bunch of different places. I even did this at an AHG meeting for the girls. So... I, I want you to uh, realize that we, we, we sometimes overlook the simplicity of the verses, right? Um, by the way, did you realize that this that you got here in your hands, doesn't matter what version you got, is basically written for a third grade reading level. So the average third grader could pick this up and read it. Except for the big words. Yeah, I, I know grown men and women who have been in the church for years. But it, year, it, 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 it was else. it was it was written at that level. So that you can get an understanding yeah. of the. the total and that's why that's why the Catholic Church didn't want you having it in your hands for years and years. I have something to add to that um, that's kind of interesting. My um, sponsor and AA, she, the former sponsor, she told me that the whole reason why people, the you know children were sent to school back, way back when when they first started sending them to school and making it mandatory was so that they would be able to read the scriptures and mm. that those were the purpose of school. Yeah, for the longest time, this was what you used to learn how yeah. to read. That was, that's what they, that was the reader in schools, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. We should still Thank learn. Uh, we, 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 we're, we're out of time officially. Uh, Chuck, you want to say prayer? Sure. Since, since Jerry said it last week. Yeah. We didn't want to signal. Got to take turns. <laughs> Shall we pray? Dear Lord and Father, we are so thankful for this time we've had together, time in which we can look into your word and that we can gain knowledge so that we can better ourselves and those around us. We're thankful for John and his ability to, to bring us this lesson. We're thankful for all those that teach, and we're thankful for Brian. And Jody, we pray that they have um, a good time as they're away. We pray that they have a safe journey back home with us. We pray for all those that are still sick and not feeling well. We pray that you be with those that have lost loved ones recently. We know that your word is there for each and every one of us. We pray that we can have the faith that we need to, the belief that we need to, to show that to those around us and that we can help influence them to study your word and to become part of our family. We are so thankful for the family that we have, and we pray that you continue to help us to grow together and grow stronger in our love towards you. It's in your name we pray. In Jesus' name Amen. we pray. Amen. I was I was gonna bring my laptop and broadcast it on my face.